welcome to our Wednesday live stream. Got my Martin here. Hope everyone's doing well. So let me get this thing in tune. And uh, today I want to talk about, I'm going to fix this camera because it's a little tiki. Uh, today I want to talk about acoustic essentials. Um, we talk a lot about electric guitar, but we don't do a lot of acoustic. So I'm going to show you in different angles kind of how how I think about the acoustic a lot of times. Again, this thing is, I'm going to get this camera just a little bit better. There we go. Um, <clears throat> a lot of times uh, we're talking about electric guitar, but I want to just talk about some acoustic stuff. Um, and I'm going to show you my right hand in a second, but a lot of acoustic guitar, C, you know, G, A minor, F, and if, if you want to make it really, really pretty, it has a lot to do with this finger, finger picking stuff, like, and I'm going to show you, so watch my right hand. figure out what's happening here and uh, <clears throat> how to make this really really pretty getting this angle correct um, so first things first uh, you got to know your normal chords like C G a minor F these kind of things so if you don't know these you know these these they call them cowboy chords because you know apparently cowboys used to play them around a campfire um, but like C G a minor, F, or that's really the key um, to a lot of like really really beautiful acoustic guitar. It's rare that I'm finding myself up, you know, up here playing acoustic. Um, so, and then here's how you make it really really beautiful: is you start incorporating finger picking and. I'm gonna give you an exercise to, on how to practice that. Um, if you if you know your C chord and you know an A minor seven chord, so basically C chord, you know um, X three two zero one zero, and then A minor seven is you just literally take off your ring finger. Okay, and here here's a be here's uh, the beautiful exercise I want to show you. What's up, Quentin? I'm gonna. So I'm going to play it once and then I'm going to break it down for you. So it's kind of folky, but you can really take it afterwards and stretch it and make it. show you how to get there so first things first is I take my C chord and I have my thumb right here and I'm playing the A string then the D string and then I come down here and play the low E string so it sounds like this so you try to do that you know real slow so A string, D string, low E string, D string, A string, D string, E string, D string. And then you just take off your ring finger over here and do the same thing. So it's like, and then we're playing the open E right here, so. All right, and then so it'll sound like this, up to tempo. Like. If you guys have your guitar, follow along. Mm. Right? And then we're gonna just add our first finger, 
just to keep things simple. So I'm going to play that pattern and I'm going to have my first finger be in charge of like the top three strings. So, so I'm playing the B string right here. I'm literally just playing the B string, but it's about the syncopation. So I'm playing this pattern. having my first finger play the B string uh, just the first I'm like just the first uh, fret right here and you can do the same pattern for the A minor 7 mm. I'm trying to play it real slow sound once you piece it together up to tempo and you make each note dynamic and like different volumes so it flows it'll sound like this and you could keep that pattern going for other chords yeah fast as well if you want I normally don't get that fast but uh, and then the next level we'll, we'll get to it uh, it won't be for today but at some point uh, in the future on a live stream I'm going to show you how to kind of incorporate more of your digits more of your fingers so you can really really make some pretty sounds I really really love the way acoustic sounds it really like all you need is an acoustic and a voice and then it sounds gorgeous really really pretty um, yeah this is the uh, a little acoustic master class today um, we, we cover so much electric guitar that I really want to cover acoustic it's so prominent in so many songs and it's just such a beautiful instrument that you can just pick up you don't need to plug it in you don't need to do anything right it just sounds pretty on its own um, and right now I'm playing a Martin D18 um, <clears throat> So yeah, this is, uh, that's, that concludes the, the acoustic guitar section of this uh, live stream. I'm going to open it up for a Q&A um, right now for you guys. If you are in the chat, say what's up. And yeah, we're going to have a little fun. Let me know any questions you've been having. Um, or yeah, any anything you've been struggling with on the guitar, I'm gonna post it too right here. Um, I'm gonna pin it right here. I see we got a couple people here. So if you're if you're watching, say what's up. You might be at work, <laughs> so you might not be able to type so much, but <clears throat> say what's up in the chat. It's another uh, kind of gloomy day here in Los Angeles. Kind of kind of rainy. And, and while people kind of respond in the chat, I can tell a couple stories. So, um, one of my first guitars was an acoustic. Clearly not a Martin. That would be insane. Um, but 
I went to a store called Mars Music. It was like a competitor with Guitar Center at, at the time, and, and they don't exist anymore. And I went and I got an acoustic guitar, I think, for like $99. It was a lot of money. Uh, still is a lot of money, but it was a lot of money as like a kid, and I aggregated some like birthday money and whatever, and I we got it, and I still I actually still had that guitar at my parents' spot. And so I started playing a lot of acoustic right away. And the acoustic, I don't know, it, it really, really spoke to me because I didn't need an amp and I could kind of bring it wherever I wanted to go. Uh, even if it was a friend's house or whatever, I didn't need any outlets, I didn't need uh, any plugs. And there's a lot of artists that really speak to me that do acoustic music, like growing up, uh, Simon Garfunkel, Neil Young, uh, huge influences on me. Uh, Harvest is a great Neil Young record. Um, and Simon and Garfunkel, some great, great songwriters. And I remember trying to, you know, trying to learn that stuff growing up. Um, um, we had, we had Sonia just join. Um, and yeah, I'll, uh, I will, uh, I'll address that question in a second. I'm, uh, um, but anyways, I was talking about like just growing up, having it, having an acoustic guitar, um, you know, learning a lot of oldies, Simon Garfunkel, Neil Young, and that kind of thing. And I just realized, man, it's just such a, <clears throat> it's such a beautiful instrument. Like, and I really like, uh, the physical feeling of like the sound reverberating against my body. Um, it's really, really nice. <clears throat> Um, it's, it's a really great feeling. Um, and Sonia asks, what type of soulful embellishments do you like to use when you play acoustic? Um, I really like to use, so if I'm down here playing a C chord, I was kind of mentioning that I oftentimes will just play open chords like C and G and A minor. Um, it's rare that I'm way up here playing acoustic guitar. It's kind of why the acoustic <laughs> cuts off right here. So instead of playing a C, you know, like that, um, I think uh, the way that I make it soulful and the way that really captures people's ears is if you're doing hammer-ons and pull-offs. So instead of just going, you know, playing that, I add hammer-ons. So check this out. Stuff like that. Um, that's, those are like little nuances that really grab the listener and it's so subtle. People don't notice it, uh, but they notice when it's not there. So that is a huge one. So those little hammer-ons right there on the D string. Um, you know, it's that little hammer-ons are really big hammer-ons and pull-offs that's that's the biggest way I add like a element of soul to capture capture the listener um, Quentin is saying your only problem with the acoustic guitar is the neck is big and the action is very high. It's kind of like a classical guitar. All right, Quentin, uh, that's just a setup thing. So you should, you can go on YouTube and figure out how to set something up. But I can tell you this, most acoustic guitars have a, you see this little hole, that circle? That circle adjusts the neck. Now you're going to be want to be, want to be careful and, um, but you, you take, you take a tool, put it in there, and start adjusting. So right, um, righty tighty, lefty loosey. So right will make the neck um, go more like this, and left will loosen the neck. So if your strings are too far away from the neck, you're going to want to turn this thing right. You're going to like, you know, or um, yeah, yeah. You're going to want to turn the Allen wrench this way and that will adjust the height of your strings and make it 
playable, I guess. So, so try that out. Um, and if your, if your um, thing isn't right here, this, you see that little circle? It might be up here as well. I'm not sure what kind of guitar you have, but it might be under here as well. So try that out and that should fix your problem because it, uh, it definitely sucks to play an acoustic guitar. That's, um, that's like hard to play. What are other people's struggles on the acoustic? It's a totally different instrument. Um, I'm gonna... It's a totally different instrument than, than the electric. Um, in many ways, it's, it's, it's just so beautiful. Um, so. And you really don't need, less is more on the acoustic. You don't need to do a lot to make it very, very pretty. You just want to make sure every note is clean. You know, if you're playing a chord, just making sure every note is clear and nothing's being flubbed. Because when you're playing acoustic, it's, it's oftentimes the center of the song. It's like the acoustic guitar and the singer um, that you're going to want to really highlight. And so you got to make sure all these notes are clear. And a way to practice that is just slow and steady. You know? See, I'm taking my right hand. acoustic stuff cuz this is a this is a, a journey So if you're just joining us, say what's up in the chat. I want to hear some struggles you have on the acoustic guitar, because uh, this is an open open section for everyone to yeah come come to the table and uh, try to help out as best I can. tune here's the other thing when it's weird weather outside like right now it's raining in Los Angeles so it's not as warm as it was the past couple days and the acoustic guitar is a piece of wood and it gets a little wonky honestly um, the wood will get expand when it's hotter and contract when it's colder and that can affect how in tune you are Acoustics, you might not have known. I love playing with my fingers on the acoustic, and the pick is really nice because it adds a a percussion element almost like you're just strumming and it's such a um, like a high-end sound uh, that it cuts through a mix like say there's drums and bass and guitar 
and piano and a million things happening. So if you have acoustic and you're just strumming away, it adds like a, almost like a tambourine or a shaker um, when there's a full band. But if it's just like me and a singer, I really, really like, or just me, I really, really like playing with my fingers. I'm gonna give you guys a better angle of just what that looks like. Don't miss my face too much. <laughs> a nice little bed for a singer to play to sing over it. And if you guys are just joining earlier in this in this live stream I was telling you a really really great exercise to practice um uh, really, really great exercise to practice over um, to like get your chops up to speed. Um, and really that just looked like, just to review, we were playing a C chord and just playing the, the A string, then the D string, then the low E string, and back to the D string. So... And that, that's like really the essential. Um, and then you're able to add your first finger as a counterpoint. And it sounds like this. Up to speed, you know? You can take that same pattern and move it to other shapes. Sonny asks, what's the chord you're playing with the D? Uh, I'm just playing a D chord. And what I'm doing is I'm adding a hammer on and pull off with that um, middle finger. Uh, she's saying after I'm playing a, I am reaching around my, with my thumb and still playing a D chord, but I have my thumb on the second fret. And then I have, I'm just playing the same, almost the exact same chord. I'm playing the same chord, but just adding my uh, middle finger on the third fret. E string. So this is like a G chord, but it has this note. If you're a music nerd, it's an it's a nine chord. So it's a G major nine. Um, doesn't really matter. Just the way I think of it is like, okay, I'm keeping like the D shape throughout the whole time. You know, it has this like consistent flow to it. You know, it's like a, it has that nice, it's since like the top notes are staying the same, like the D shape is staying the same, but the low bass is moving it. It gives the listener like a feeling of like, oh, this is going somewhere, but it's also consistent, which is a really, um, I don't know, it's a useful tool. It's very, very pretty. Yeah. All right, so you can kind of kind of see what's going on. Um, thanks, Sonia. I agree. It's definitely a very, very pretty sound. Great for singer-songwriter. Great for uh, just acoustic, uh, like songwriting in general. Neil Young, Crosby, Stills, Nash and Young. Um, a lot of gospel music uses it as the bedrock for the song. A lot of folk music uses it. Um, yeah, it's very, very, very useful and very pretty. So. What else we got here? If you guys are hanging out in the chat, um, say what's up. Um, yeah, it's always fun to get to know everyone and get to hear about your experience, where you're from, any struggles you have on the acoustic. 
um, guitar or just guitar in general. And yeah, I'm here for you guys to answer any questions right now. So we'll probably do this for, you know, a few more minutes. And um, yeah, while you guys are getting your, your questions together, I'm going to talk a little more. Um, so what I was, I, I left off in the story that I had an acoustic guitar and I bought it when I was younger. And there was a place called Modest Music. And afterwards, I upgraded to a Takamini, which is an acoustic electric guitar. And I have photos of me when I was a teenager playing that. And that's when I really got into bands like Incubus um, and like some stuff that was on the radio. Super fun stuff. Learning to play it, learning to play Led Zeppelin and Pink Floyd and all this classic rock stuff on the acoustic. And it just was such a blast learning all this stuff. And a, a lot of that music that I learned um, at that time is still very popular. Like. Dark Side of the Moon, Pink Floyd is a. I think it's still on like the Billboard um, as far as like album sales, which is crazy. I think it's like fifty some years old. So some of these records are very very timeless, and you know they got a lot of acoustic guitar. In it. Um, what's up, Douglas? Um, how you doing, man? Um, another like a Pink Floyd uh, song that. Super timeless is I wish you were here. Um, I remember learning that when I was a kid. Super, super great. Um, how you doing, Douglas? All good over here, man. Yeah, there's so many levels to this thing and then we could get totally you know we can get jazzy and play some chords up here r&b chords um i think until you really learn some of these fundamentals and like some of the folk stuff that's that's really where you're gonna get a lot of bang for your buck on acoustic and getting your right hand in order that's really the key Um, Douglas asks, do you prefer playing more complicated stuff like jazz or songs that sit under your skin, like all the classics? Um, do you mean like, I've got you under my skin? Um, as far as just playing guitar, you're asking, do I like complicated stuff? I guess, can you rephrase that question? I'm trying to understand. Douglas, what, what you were asking. I'm not sure if there was like a typo in there. Um, Sonia asked, do you, do you find you have a different practice routine for acoustic guitar playing? That's a good question. Um, absolutely, yes. I, I mean, so I can't bend on the acoustic. I'm not gonna practice that. And I'm not really drilling scales on the acoustic. Um, one thing I like to do is just learn songs. So if you guys have heard, um, Bridge Over tw Troubled Water, Simon and Garfunkel. Um, Celia by Simon and Garfunkel. Learning, learning like Neil Young. Um, uh, this is called Needle and the Damage Done. songs is really my routine um, and making sure I'm act if you're a beginner beginner one thing that you can practice is just changing chords in time I remember that was a huge struggle of mine growing up like I felt like it would take me so long to get from the C chord to like a D chord I was like how do people do that and I think the way that I was able to bridge that is just putting on a metronome and playing a chord and then getting there within like a metronome time period. So, you know, turn on at 80 beats per minute and try to change chords in time. Um, Douglas is saying, do I prefer playing more complicated stuff 
like jazz, or songs that sit under your skin like all the classics. Um, like, So he's saying, well, let me rephrase it. Do you prefer playing music that challenges me, like jazz, or do I prefer songs, just like songs in general? Um, I prefer playing music that, I guess I don't really find a distinction between the two. Um, if it was up to me, I would just be in a studio all day, every day. Um, but as far as like my personal preference, um, I like stuff that connects with people. And so it's very situational. Like if I'm like, imagine, imagine you are in a cocktail bar, you know, and clearly you don't want to hear a rock band or probably an acoustic guitar, but you want to hear jazz. Um, so situationally, um, that's a thing. And now if I'm just sitting by myself, hanging out in, you know, my bedroom or whatever in my house, um, I will probably play, um, on the acoustic, I'll play exactly what I was showing you guys. I was, I'll play, you know, these just pretty chords um, like that. It's kind of a struggle to play a lot of jazz on acoustic. Um, if I had an electric guitar, um, it would be different. If I had an amp that was cranked up, distorted, it would be different. A lot, a lot of times the sound effects, what I, like the literal instrument affects what I want to play. So if I pick this up, it... For me, it calls out just to play like, you know. It just calls out to play some acoustic stuff. Um, and yeah, I don't really have a have a preference as far as um, as far as like what genre. So uh, Sonia asks, have you played any gospel at church on acoustic? Sonia, yeah, I actually have um, a record with Jonathan McReynolds and Molly Music that was Grammy nominated and I'm playing acoustic guitar on it. And that's a gospel record. Um, and it's usually very, very simple chords. Uh, we did this record years ago, but it, I think the chords were really like like this. <laughs> stuff I'm telling you guys um, just open chords G E7 A7 D7 um, yeah I've recorded on gospel records or or that kind of thing um, I don't often play acoustic guitar at church um, but I've done um, um, but I've done you know recordings with it. Um, Sonia asks, is it needed, do you need to slap the guitar to feel more percussive? She's not a fan of doing it. <laughs> Any other techniques? Uh, so basically she was, you're saying, I, I was playing this. That little slap right there. Um, I, I only do it to keep time. Um, as far as like if there's no drummer, um, but no, you definitely do not need to do it. I mean, it would sound great. Here, let me angle the camera a little more. It'd sound great if you're just going. This, it's just almost like a, a downbeat. Uh, you can just do this, like, like almost hit the strings like this. You don't have to do an actual slap. Uh, it is helpful to keep time. Um, but you know, you people can feel the time without. That's that's with no slap. Here's with the slap. So yeah. Slap can be distracting sometimes. Really situational. Um, yeah. Bring that thing back up. Um, the first person I heard do it was John Mayer. Um, when I was growing up, he had this song called Stop This Train. 
and it went. Oh, I'm gonna change the camera again. Um, great song. And he's not really like slapping, he's just kind of like, um, so this the song is called Stop This Train, I guess situationally it's literally supposed to be like a train, like a train beat, you know, and it's, you know, that's, that's a nice little touch. Um, you know, it kind of feels like a train going up, down the track, the way everything is, comes together. Um, but I remember him doing that and I just really, really like that technique. He also has a lot of songs that in, implement the percussive technique, not for everyone. Um, but keep in mind, like, if a song is called Stop This Train and you're able to play a train-like sound on the instrument, that's a really, really great um, technique, you know, to reinforce the lyrics and the message of the song. So, yeah. Um, if you guys are new to acoustic, definitely check out Simon and Garfunkel. Definitely check out Neil Young. Um... Check out Pink Floyd's Wish You Were Here, the song. They have an album, um, but check out the song as well. Uh, it, it's incredible. Um, it's tuned, that song in particular is tuned down. The guitar is tuned down a half a step, so you're going to have to do that. But, um, but yeah, great, great music. So if anyone doesn't have any questions, uh, I'm gonna wrap up here and get along get along with my rainy day activities. Um, yeah, so thank you, thank you everyone for joining today's live stream. Um, if you're new to this channel, what's up? I'm Alec. Um, thanks for stopping by. And if you're a returning person like Sonia or Quentin or Douglas, thanks for being back here. Uh, I love seeing familiar faces it's 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 awesome so um and if you guys are um wanting to find out more i have a free master class that's available in the description it's free you don't need to pay any money um goes a little bit deeper than i have time to do today with different angles and you know it's it's nice it's us very very useful so check that out um and yeah, I do, uh, I come out with videos every Tuesday and then we do live streams every Wednesday. Um, so 10 a.m. Pacific time, Los Angeles time, California time. Um, every Wednesday I will be back here and I hope to see uh, some of your faces again. Or some of your, actually, so speaking of some of your faces, clearly I can't see your face. But YouTube just launched a new feature that I want to start implementing, which is... Um, a split screen so I can we can have a chat like you know half of it will be uh, me and then some of you guys can come on and ask questions um, live so I'm gonna start implementing that as well um, which will be which I'm very very excited about I almost did it today but I was like eh, alright uh, let's get let's uh let me research it real quick before I implement that so in the future I'm gonna have you guys on and you guys can just ask questions um, within the video chat which would be super um, fun and I get to actually meet uh, you guys and see what you look like. So, all right. Well, take care, guys. Um, I'll see you soon. Have a great, safe day. And I will catch you next week.